Hey guys, welcome to History Behind the Warrior, and today we're going to be talking about Noob Cybot. Now this history is all over the place, so I'm going to try and piece it together as best as I can. I'm not going to say that there aren't any issues with the timeline and continuity, but I'll try to decipher it as good as I can. Pre-Mortal Kombat Noob Cybot's real name is Bi Han. Bi Han and his younger brother, Kwai Liang, were kidnapped as children by the Lin Kuei. The two would be trained up by the Lin Kuei to become the world's best assassins, with Bi Han taking the name of Sub-Zero, and his younger brother taking the name Tundra. The reason why they both have ice related names is because they originally come from a cryomancing village, and as such live up to their ancestors legacy as being cryomancers themselves. Although the two of them were forced into the Lin Kuei, they would trained there for so long that was the only place they called home. The two would train and then begin climbing the ranks of the Lin Kuei, with Bi Han arguably being one of the strongest ones there. Mortal Kombat Mythologies with Bi Han still under the name Sub-Zero, he had a reputation for being one of the best thieves and assassins in the Lin Kuei. His talents were recognised by a Neverrealm sorcerer known as Quan Chi, who wanted to hire Bi Han to find the ancient scroll in the Shaolin Temple. Sub-Zero would accept this mission and travel to the Shaolin Temple to get the scroll. Unknown to Sub-Zero, Quan Chi had also hired Hanzo Hisashi of the Shirai Ryu clan to also acquire the scroll. Sub-Zero managed to push his way to the chamber where the scroll was. As Sub-Zero was acquiring the scroll, Scorpion would appear and a violent battle would ensue between the two. This battle would end with Sub-Zero brutally murdering Scorpion, in which he would then leave with the scroll. Bihan would return to the Lin Kuei Mountain Fortress to hand in the scroll. As a thanks to the Lin Kuei Grand Master, Quan Chi would promise him that he'd bring about the absolute and utter destruction of the Shirai Ryu. Quan Chi would also reveal to Sub-Zero that he was responsible for hiring Scorpion, and this didn't settle well with Bihan. Quan Chi would then open up the scroll, which was a map that showed the way to the legendary Temple of Elementals within the Himalayas. Due to Quan Chi having crossed the gods of Earthrealm in the past, he was actually sealed from entering the temple, and this left Sub-Zero to be dispatched and retrieve the amulet. From the moment he arrived, Bi Han was forced to fight off against incredible odds, such as elite guards, lethal traps, and even four elemental gods, one of them being Fujin. Bi Han was smart and cunning enough to overwhelm all the enemies that were in his way, and eventually went to the chamber which contained the amulet. With Bi Han defeating the last temple guardian, he had lifted the mystic seal stopping Quan Chi from entering the temple. As Sub-Zero was about to retrieve the amulet, Quan Chi would materialise and take hold of it. Quan Chi then revealed the truth behind the amulet, and that it belonged to a fallen elder god known as Shinnok who was banished to the Neverrealm millennia ago. The reason Quan Chi wanted the amulet was to fully restore Shinnok to his full power, in which he could then begin destroying the realms, unleashing havoc everywhere. Quan Chi would then disappear, leaving Sub-Zero in the chamber alone. Bihan would then be approached by Raiden, the god of thunder and protector of Earthrealm, displeased with Sub-Zero and his clan's arrogance. Raiden commanded Sub-Zero to recover the amulet as a god had no domain in the Neverrealm, in which he then opened up a portal. The second Sub-Zero arrived, he was immediately trapped in a prison of souls by Quan Chi. It was during his imprisonment where he came across his undead spectre and arch nemesis Scorpion, who would blame Sub-Zero for the destruction of his clan and family. The two of them would then fight once more, with Sub-Zero once again beating Scorpion and retreating. As Sub-Zero escaped, he would fight three of Quan Chi's underlings, being Kaya, Serena, and Jataka. Sub-Zero would kill Kaya and Jataka, but spare Serena. He then set his eyes on Quan Chi's fortress and confront the deceiving sorcerer. Quan Chi revealed to Sub-Zero that the only reason he was able to retain his mortality in the Neverrealm was because of the evil that was in his heart and being the ruthless assassin he was known to be. This message would stick in the back of his mind as he fought the sorcerer and defeated him. With Serena assisting Sub-Zero in defeating her old master, she then begged Bi Han to take her away from the Neverrealm. However, Serena was quickly killed by Shinnok, who had now been powered by his amulet. Using his instincts, Sub-Zero would grab the amulet from Shinnok. He would then turn into a giant demon. It is unknown if Sub-Zero fought the demonic Shinnok, but in the end, Sub-Zero escaped through a portal created by Raiden. After delivering the amulet to the god, Sub-Zero questioned what Quan Chi said to him, and Raiden confirmed it, but reminded the warrior that only he could choose his own fate. It was up to Bi Han to choose his destiny, but were he to die with his soul still corrupted as it is now, he would descend to the fifth plane of the Neverrealm, to face a terrible fate unknown even to Raiden. Mortal Kombat When Bi Han returned to the Lin Kuei headquarters, he learned that he'd been invited to the Mortal Kombat tournament by Shang Tsung. 
Lin Kuei had also been approached with a contract for the Sorcerer's Head, in which Sub-Zero would accept it and go to the Mortal Kombat tournament. Sub-Zero's participation in the tournament remains largely unknown, however we do find out in the end Shang Tsung is defeated by Liu Kang, in which Sub-Zero is then confronted by Hanzo Hisashi, going by the name of Scorpion. The two fight each other to the death with the island erupting in chaos around them, however Scorpion manages to defeat Sub-Zero and finally kill Bi Han. Mortal Kombat 2 Much like Raiden and Quan Chi had predicted, Sub-Zero's soul descended into Neverrealm's fifth plane, where he'd be stripped of his pride and his compassion. Bi Han would be resurrected by Quan Chi, in which he would then discard his old name and take on the name of Noob Saibot. Now many people ask me why is Noob Saibot called Noob Saibot? The two people who made the game was Ed Boon and John Tobias, and Boon backwards says Noob and Tobias backwards says Saibot. So naturally they just decided to throw their last names, flip them around and just chuck it in the game. So that's where his name originates from. And a big ironic twist, Bi Han would now pledge his allegiance to Shinnok and become a part of the Brotherhood of Shadow, the very thing he resented when he was alive. His second mission was to scout out the second Mortal Kombat tournament that was taking place, faithfully monitoring the situation for the fallen elder god Shinnok. Now Bi Han had been stripped of everything he ever loved, even his relation to his brother. If anything, Noob Saibot is just filled with anger, rage, and the need to conquer other worlds. Now Noob Saibot doesn't actually turn up properly in Mortal Kombat 2, he more or less makes like a special guest appearance as a secret character, but his story in the game actually doesn't really happen. Mortal Kombat 3 Now Noob Saibot doesn't really do much and he doesn't really have that much of a story in Mortal Kombat 3. If anything, he's there to monitor Shao Kahn's invasion of Earthrealm. Mortal Kombat 4 After Shao Kahn was defeated, Shinnok sensing his time had come was finally freed from the Neverrealm by Quan Chi. Noob would be one of the participants in conquering Edenia. Despite the careful planning they had taken to do this, Shinnok would be defeated by Raiden's forces and the Brotherhood of Shadow would then disband. With Shinnok defeated, Noob would return to Outworld and pledge his allegiance to Shao Kahn. A few years later, Noob Saibot would appear during a battle of Edenia and Outworld, in which he attacked an exhausted Goro, mortally wounding him. Mortal Kombat Deception With Shao Kahn's death and Shinnok's disappearance, Noob Saibot was allowed to do whatever he wished. His goals were to create his own legion of assassins. While searching Shao Kahn's fortress, he came across the decommissioned body of Smoke. Noob Saibot then reprogrammed the cyborg to remain loyal to him and reactivated his nanotechnology, in which he then formed a plan to build an army of cyber demons using Smoke as their template, in which their team was now known as Noob Smoke. As he leaves Shao Kahn's fortress, he is spotted by Sub Zero and Serena. Noob Saibot and Smoke then disappear in the Neverrealm, only to be pursued by his younger brother. However, Noob and Smoke knew that they were being followed and attacked Sub Zero, overpowering the Grand Master in which Noob Saibot then revealed to Sub-Zero that he was his older brother. After knocking his younger brother out unconscious, Serena would jump in and attack the two, in which they would then flee. After Serena parted ways with Sub-Zero, she would be ambushed by Noob Smoke and a former master Quan Chi. The three would interrogate her, demanding to know the location of the Lin Kuei Temple. Mortal Kombat Armageddon Although Noob Saibot is no longer teamed with Smoke, they do work in conjunction with each other. The two of them then lead an invasion to the Lin Kuei Palace in order to retake the clan and kill his younger brother, Kuai Liang. However, the two of them are stopped by the Edenian warrior known as Taven. However, after his defeat, Sub-Zero explains that he will attempt to cleanse his brother's soul and hopefully bring back Bi Han. Sub-Zero is successful in restoring Smoke's memories, but ultimately fails in trying to bring back his brother, and Noob remains evil. At some point Noob manages to escape and joins the forces of darkness. He's seen participating in the battle of Armageddon, but much like everyone else in that fight, he is ultimately killed during the final battle. Now we can come to the reboot of Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 9. It's not really explained if Mortal Kombat mythologies is still canon due to the reboot of the timeline, but I'm willing to just run with it and just say it is. Behan first appears as the original Sub-Zero and is seen in the first Mortal Kombat tournament with two of his fellow Lin Kuei members, Cyrax and Sektor. He first fights off against Sonya Blade in Goro's lair by the order of Shang Tsung. He is however defeated. Later on in the tournament, he confronts the Shira Ryu Hellspawn Scorpion, who wishes to kill him for murdering his family and clan. After mocking Scorpion, 
who responds by dragging Bihan down to the Netherrealm, in which the two of them then fight. Although Scorpion defeats Bihan, he remembers a prior agreement he had with Raiden to spare Bihan's life. However, Quan Chi appears and begins to manipulate Scorpion's mind by showing him illusions of the Shira Ryu massacre, as well as the murder of Scorpion's wife and son at the hands of Sub Zero. Lost in a fit of rage, Scorpion kills Bihan, despite Bihan claiming that he had no knowledge of these events. After his death at the hands of Scorpion, he would once again be stripped of his compassion and his pride, and become Noob Saibot once more. Noob Saibot first appears when the Earth Realm warriors Liu Kang and Kung Lao are looking for Katana, in which Noob then attacks Kung Lao. After being defeated by Kung Lao, he is then questioned for his identity, claiming he has a familiar presence. However, Noob manages to slip away when Kung Lao is forced to fight Goro. Noob later appears alongside Quan Chi in a desert, where he is witnessing Sindel's resurrection. Noob is later seen alongside Melina engaging Cabal, who has made a move to attack the Emperor Shao Kahn. However, the both of them are defeated. Noob is later seen assisting Quan Chi in casting a spell to create a massive Soulnado. It is here where he confronts his younger brother, Kwai Liang, who has now been cyberized by the Lin Kuei. He tells Kwai that he disrespects those colours by wearing them, telling his brother that he is not worthy of the name Sub-Zero, and reveals to his brother that he is in fact Bihan. Kwa Liang is initially shocked and tries to reach out to his brother, however Bihan initially shuts him down, saying that although they share the same blood, they are no longer brothers, cutting all ties to each other. The two brothers then fight, with Noob being defeated by Kwa Liang. After the battle, Kwa Liang admits that Noob was right, they are no longer family. Not long after his fight with Sub-Zero, Noob is forced to battle Nightwolf. Nightwolf manages to get the upper hand and kick Noob Saibot into the Soulnado. It is unknown whether or not Noob is destroyed or not, due to the fact the Soulnado is designed to tear apart anything in its way. However, I will remind you, this is Mortal Kombat we're talking about here, so characters can be brought back or they can be left dead forever. And this is ultimately the last we see of the Noob Saibot properly. He does have a few references in Mortal Kombat X and in the comics, however he doesn't play a very large role. Now I also want to give a shout out to one of my friends called Megan to prove that she actually knows a YouTuber, so hello Megan, hope you enjoyed the video. Anyway, back on topic guys, I think Noob Cyborg's a pretty interesting character, I think they could have explored a lot more with him if they brought him back and actually did something with him because they've been doing a lot with a lot of the characters now and rehashing them as Revenants, so they're getting quite interesting. Hopefully if they bring Noob Cyborg, they might bring him back on the good side and see what they actually do with him. Anyway guys, here's a preview for next week's character. This will be easy. Well, I covered Melina and Katana, and it seems only fair that I finish the trio off by finishing Jade. Anyway, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this. I'm covering a lot more female characters now, because my female demographic want me to see me cover them. Sonya is definitely on the table. She'll most likely happen at a later date, but she'll be definitely the next female character I cover. There are another two characters who I want to cover, who are Kano and Rain. These guys are fan favourites, and many people want to see them. I personally cannot decide. So you guys in the comments decide who you want. Whoever you see like puts Kano or Rain, thumbs up that comment. Whoever gets the most at the end of the week when the Jade episode comes out, I'll finally reveal who won it and who will be on the following week. Anyway guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with all your friends, annoy everyone you love and I'll hopefully see you guys next time.